Hey, food friends, and welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Today, I am thrilled to have a great food friend of mine, Pat Bennett from Pat's Granola on the show. Pat, welcome. So great to see you and hear you here. Thank you so much for asking me, Ainsley. I'm so thrilled to be a guest on your program. Pat, I know about your fantastic product, and I've actually got some right here with me. Oh, the um, ginger spice. <laughs> <laughs> ginger spice is my fave. Um, but for everyone listening or who's not familiar with uh, Pat's Granola, can you just tell us a little bit about the company and about yourself? Absolutely. Pat's Granola was started more than 25 years ago when I was faced with trying to find good for you, nutritious, fuel building food for my school age son, who was a student athlete. There was never anything good to eat at the after school games or at practices and things that we went to in the car. So I started making food at the time, the children called it the stuff that I would pack and travel for all the games, as well as I was commuting long distances and was always hungry, very long days. Um, the granola was born clearly out of a need for food that we could eat that was delicious, was good for us, and was convenient to pack in a lunchbox, a backpack, or even my briefcase. So that was the origin of how the tropical, which is our signature flavor, first started. Fast forward, I moved to Cleveland, Ohio from New York about eight years ago and started really putting into practice moving this from a home-based hobby into a real legitimate business. And that's where I'm at today. I was able to make the hobby into a business, still making that same signature tropical. I've added two more flavors and Ainsley, you, you showed me the ginger spice, which is one of the newer flavors. But the foundation of what I did was to create real food that not only my family could eat, but now could be shared with the wider audience and other consumers. I love that this started from your own life and trying to fill a need that you saw. And then you kind of like, you left it on the sidelines for years as you Long time. did some very different pieces in your career. I um, did. This is your, this is your third career, correct? This is truly an encore career. I like to call myself an encore entrepreneur, but you know, I've always been incubating ideas for businesses and food has been such a large part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a family where my mother gardened and so she was a really good food provider in terms of growing food, uh, canning food, uh, creative with how she fed our family. I took lunch every day and we were really a three meal a day family. And so I tried to transfer that to my own family, which, which grew to three boys uh, and a very hungry, big Rottweiler. And, you know, over the course of just kind of refining that first granola, which took about a year. It took one solid year of making batch after batch after batch of granola. Some of it was really, really bad. In fact, it was so bad the Rottweiler wouldn't even eat it and he ate everything. However, once I perfected it, the kids said, stop, don't change a thing. It had to have the right combination of taste because kids will not eat anything that doesn't taste good. It also visually had to look good and it had to be able to travel. The travel piece of it was really, really important. And I took that granola everywhere and I stashed it everywhere in cold weather, under the kids' beds. It was outside in the garage, it was in the car to kind of test it on my own as to how it would stand up for taste and integrity. And then I had it scientifically tested once I started my business just to ensure that it was correct integrity, if you will, and that it held up. But honestly, it's packaged to last for a year. It doesn't last a year because people are eating it. I just sent you the bag and you're halfway through the 
the bag. Oh, there's like almost nothing left for all three that you sent. I had to tell oh. my boyfriend, like, don't finish those. I'm about to hop on a call with Pat. Like, don't finish it. He's like, can I have it afterwards then? Like, I'm always, always happy to hear that because I made food for us, but I'm making food now for other people who really want the same things that I do. And part of the work that I was able to do uh, with you was to understand how important that was. Bring more of my story as to why this was important to me personally, but it also resonates now with other people. And it certainly resonated over the course of the last year when families and people were together, maybe more than they ever had to be, and they were just eating more. So that's where I thought, wow, this really means something to other people more than I really thought it did. That's a really great feeling to know that you get to be a part of people's life. In I'm on people's ways. breakfast tables. I'm in their pantry. Yeah. I'm in their backpacks. Um, people are looking to where they can buy it. And right now, you know, it's distributed at 10 businesses now right. in Northeast Ohio, which is just incredible. A year ago, I think I had two retail locations and the online piece of it has been tremendously successful, which I grew last year when the retail location shut down. So yeah. out of a need, I was able just to decide how are people wanting to shop for certain kinds of food and make it attractive to do that. And my online sales really took a big boost throughout the entire year which I'm very grateful for. And they still continue to grow. Hmm. That's fantastic. So like in the wildest year of history, you were able to get like eight new locations, yes. increase your online store. I mean, I think a lot of people got a little scared last year and they um, stalled and they mm -hmm. didn't push mm -hmm. forward. You know, what made you recognize that I have to push this forward and and you kind of kept kept pushing with it all I think when it was a really tough year for a lot of people to make that decision to push I think part of it is I never thought about failing I never thought about pulling the plug on my little company because that's just not something I chose to do and maybe it was just stupidity or just bullheadedness but I was going to find a way to keep selling my granola because I felt as if there was a bigger story than just the granola. I thought that people needed to feel comforted. You know what part of it? I needed to feel comforted. And I wanted certain foods and feelings to recreate those feelings because I was scared too. And the unpredictability month after month after month just said, people want the same things that I do. So out of the need to grow the online before the stores actually opened back up was a sense of growing out my blog content to give people ideas for well, what can you do with the foods you already have in your house. And it included everything from certainly things you could do with granola that were other than breakfast, but it also included stories about me and my family and how I grew up that resonated with so many other people who wanted to feel good, Just, you know, the good old days. Maybe they weren't always good. However, the things that we decided to share, and it's my twin sister and I actually who have been contributing to the blog, to blog, we just felt like, let's just tell our story about what food means to us. And that's what I believe helps grow. People got to know me a little bit better and they liked what they saw and they continued to ask for more. And I just continued to contribute more to that. And as that happened, my sales also increased in proportion to what people saw about me. What you see is what you get. And I also felt the need to tell them about how important the community of food people are especially in this part of the country, you know, the Midwest, hearty souls, people who have been in business for a long time. You know, my food friends were really struggling and they still are because many of the businesses 
they've either shuttered or they haven't been able to certainly sell the way that they used to, collaborating with them has been critical to my success. Partnering with other small businesses, whether it's through uh, associations or just community meetings, because we're all in this together. And I really do believe that the granola is just one small piece of community. It's really more about like-mindedness. It's about collaboration. It's about shared values. People have very, very strong values and they have strong feelings about food and what food has meant to them in their lives. And we share that. And so the message is much bigger than just Pat's granola. So that's what I, I just, I keep pushing that forward. I think that's so key with the values piece and knowing those values that your business is built on and not being afraid to share those, mm -hmm. even though sometimes people might not agree with them. Uh, it might not resonate with everyone, but you're being true to yourself and the right people That's will right. come to you. Absolutely. And doing some work to understand more about how important that is to me, because I don't make a food product where it's one size fits all. I have a very unique product to me, how it's made, the taste profile, and how it's to be sold and where it's to be sold. And it's not just a throw it out there and hope for the best. I've really spent some time paying attention to who my customers are and who and where I sell to. And that has grown exponentially in a way I never really expected, but doing so much of that work. And a lot of it was done during COVID where organizations were making uh, webinars available and Zoom, helping people understand this was not the time to stop. And so I just didn't stop. Every day, all day, I get up, do this work, learn as much as I can, really put myself through the pace and it has paid off. It just unbelievably has paid off and probably in a way I never would have done if it hadn't been for COVID. It's like this adverse set of conditions help contribute to my being able to grow my business, but also be a part of other small businesses in this community because each leaf helps the tree and we're stronger together than we are independent. And so I believe that wholeheartedly. I really do that I am in a position now to help and work with other people and they also with me. Mm, that's so wonderful like I get that from you you are such a community person and you are like let's raise everyone up and when we when you know we all win then we're all stronger together and and it you know interesting that COVID allowed you to push forward um I can tell that you are the type of person who is like no when I say I'm gonna win like we're gonna win like we're gonna keep doing this you are a woman who definitely makes things happen and you took 2020 and made it a year to double down on your business absolutely and invest absolutely. and grow and it's gotten you some great new listings it's gotten you great coverage um and into a lot more people's homes now and also to think about possibilities mm. that maybe I never would have considered and to look past something that maybe not just in my community, but communities that look like Cleveland, Ohio, across the country. And I see that with customers that come to us. We're probably selling now in 30 states across the country, which is incredible. I have customers in, in so many different places who just, they love the product, they're reordering it, they sent it as holiday gifts, and that's an affirmation. One of the funniest things, it's really not funny, it caused me a lot of pain, Christmas presents. The last two Christmas presents that I sent for a customer, they just arrived today. Oh, no. <laughs> now, I had sent replacements to two of them because they just didn't get there. They didn't care. They were so happy, so happy 
to get such a wonderful, wonderful gift, they ordered some more. <laughs> so in spite of my feeling terrible about the US Postal Service not delivering, here it is over a month past Christmas that they received their Pat's Granola Hug in a Bowl gift and they're loving it. They're just loving it. So that made me feel terrific, terrific, because it was a situation I couldn't control. Well, and, and that's I think a big that piece. Was, yeah, couldn't control. Last mm -hmm. year, nobody could control anything. Mm -hmm. But I think that I just, I wasn't going to lose faith in my product. I wasn't going to lose faith in the prospect. People need to eat. And what is it that they wanted to eat to feel a little bit better? Well, they were eating granola and they were eating Pat's granola. And I just kept talking about that and showing them ways and taking pictures with my iPhone of what my own breakfast table looked like or my desk. People loved it. They want, I want what she's having. And so that has really helped contribute to how I've been able to grow my business very organically, which has been fantastic. Yeah, that organic growth can definitely be a piece for businesses. And I think 2020, we saw a lot of that. Uh, and we were chatting a little bit before we even hit record about being able to say no to certain pieces that are not necessarily the right fit for Pat's granola. Um, That's right. Can you talk a little bit more about that? And yes, what does yes. that look like? Because someone starting um, out might be like, what do you mean you said no to someone? Like, no way, anyone and everyone who will take the product, let's get it to them. Well, I, we, we were talking that when I started, I didn't know what I didn't know. It was almost blindly building this small business based on what I thought I knew. And as I started to do more intensive work, investing in looking at myself, the values that I have that I grew up with, who, it is, who is it that really is my customer that is most likely to want to buy Pat's Granola, but also doing the back work as to where do they live, the kinds of activities that they're in, the demographic, you know, the research piece of it, as you know, I love, I really did love all the research that I was able to do because it helped me craft the ideal customer profile. And then in turn, where do people shop that, that do that? And so to be able to say no, it's always the polite no, but it isn't a one size fits all. There's lots of granola out there, there's grocery store granola, there's private label granola, and I think that there is a specific place for each product. I don't necessarily believe that my product fits everywhere. And I am perfectly fine with that. I think you have to do that kind of work and know who you are and where you want to sell to, to try and be successful. Because to, to be everywhere and all things to all people, it, it's not a working solution to me. And I know that, I really, really do know that. It really sets you up for disappointment because you think, oh, I'm in all these stores, but I'm not really selling anything. I don't have that situation. The selected businesses that I'm in are really selected because they have the right fit. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that feels a lot better when you know it's in the right place and it's gonna actually sell right? That's a lot easier. You can focus your efforts on, on being in those places where it's really going to sell. Yes. And it allows me to have a better level of customer engagement with the retailers, as well as customers that buy online. And I have some customers that go to the retailer and buy, they also shop online. It just depends. And now they're sending gifts, you know, Valentine's day is coming. People are sending that and this COVID continues to progress and people are not going out as much or they're not able to visit, they're sending more gifts of food and food is really a great gift to send. And I also feel that the shop local buy local is really gaining a head of steam in lots of communities and businesses. So we're playing right to that 
because people want businesses that are in their communities to stay in business. And again, every leaf helps the tree. If you help me, I'm going to shop in my community because that's where I choose to put the money back in. So it really helps ensure that the community stays, my friends stay, other businesses stay so that they'll all be there past this time that we're in. I think that's such a great way of looking at things. Pat, you mentioned something earlier about um, taking your, your business and really switching it from a hobby mm -hmm. to a business. What did that shift look like for you from moving from a hobby to a business? I don't think I ever shared with you. It had a lot to do with my husband and my son not believing I was going to do it. They both felt a lot sooner than I did that this could have been a business. And they finally got to the point where they just confronted me and said, you know what, you're never going to do anything with this. And I got really, really angry. <laughs> and the very wow. next day, I guess I signed up for some training through the Women's Business Center. And I took a scratch made incubator course. And I was really very quiet about it. And then I decided that I was going to put everything in place to create my, my business, my legitimate business. And I opened a bank account and off we go. But it was having them finally believe that I had taken my foot off the pedal and I was able to go forward. That's probably been the most gratifying thing to me because they have been all along my biggest fans. And so it only made sense I could not disappoint either one of them and the rest of my family and friends and colleagues and people who had just known all along what I was doing. It played a very large part in my just, I'm doing it. I'm just doing it because I can't have them not believe in me because they believed in the product long before I did. Wow, that's, I thank you for sharing that story. <laughs> That is like the people around us, they have such a great influence. And when they see it, sometimes we need almost that outside push to yeah. get us to see what yeah, they're doing. And they're harsh critics. They're harsh critics when they don't think that I'm doing what, and I'll say, you know what? I think I believe that I know where this is going and I'm stronger now in terms of my positioning stronger in terms of all the pieces and the growth strategy that I want for the business, I probably wouldn't have been able to do that a couple of years ago because I just didn't have the foundational piece and having done the critical work, which I spent a lot of time last year doing. So it was almost backwards, if you will, but it's fine because I'm in a much better place today than I probably ever would have been previously. And that's I'm, I'm grateful for that. I really am. It's like you needed to get your feet wet a little bit, try it out a little yes. bit, see if you really wanted this. And then once you made that decision, you're like, okay, I'm in market now. How do I maybe backpedal a little bit to see what else I might need to know, but you did make right. action without that. And then it was the right time to, you know, go all in, in the business. It, it really was. And the work was so important that I did with Hume and a few other uh, organizations that just helped me define who is it that I am? What is my brand? And the brand, uh-huh, did include me. <laughs> I'm shy by nature. So I've had to be able to put a little bit more of myself out there and share a little bit more of details. And I've done that fortunately through the blog where people are like, I didn't know that, or I, I didn't realize that you felt that way, or the way that you grew up and how you learn to cook, or what is it that you know interests you? So it's been a learning for not just the brand, but for me as well to embrace that we both sort of move together, but the work was critical to get to this point. It really was. You, you have to do the work.
Yeah, you have to do the work and like trust the process and the time of oh. it all too. And it's hard. The work is hard. Yeah, there's a lot. There is a lot for sure. For sure. Pat, talk to me about one of the one of the big lessons that you've had. I know there's so many lessons in in business, but what's been in the, one of the big lessons that like if you could go back in time and kind of be like, no, 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 Pat, let's steer this way. Um, or if someone's, you know, brand new in their journey right now, uh, what is something that you could share to that you've learned over the years that's helped oh my you God. out now? I feel like there's lessons every day and I still don't know some of what I don't know, but I think that I'm more keenly aware of listening to, you know, different opinions but also the biggest lesson I think that people can take away from a journey similar to mine, it's never too late and you have to trust your own instinct. If you know in your heart of hearts that you've got a great product or an idea, don't let anyone talk you out of it. Now it could mean you need to make adjustments as to what the execution looks like but if you really, really believe that this is what you should be doing, then that is in fact what you should be doing and just run the tires out on it. Go for broke, don't be scared, do everything you possibly can to support what you believe in because you might be pleasantly surprised as I have been that there's something really good there and the world needs you to do that. And I believe that I've said to you many, many times, this isn't just about granola. I think that the messaging and the timing has been critically important to me. People need to hear what I've been saying. Yeah, they need to hear it from me, little old me. However, that's fine. If I have something, then someone else has something. Ainsley, you have a gift, a, a remarkable, gift of teaching and guiding and mentoring that is critically important to the work that you do to bring it to the world of what I do because together we're, we're doing great things so I would tell anyone just don't lose sight of whatever that little twinkle is that keeps you know keeps tapping you on the shoulder or kicking you in the rear end or just reminding you that there's something nagging on you that maybe you need to explore a little bit more. I wish that I had learned to listen to some of that much, much earlier in life. However, I listen now and I'm, I'm okay with that. So I just, I'm always encouraging. I'm always telling people, don't give up. I know it's hard, but your time is coming. Uh, stick with it. I, I really want people to think they have this idea. It could be fantastic and life-changing because that's what this journey has been for me today. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. And like, thank you for bringing your gift to the world. I think I 100% agree. You know, as you're just chatting, I'm like, this is why Pat and I, like, I just love chatting with Pat because you look at the world as, not even glass half full it's like well mm -hmm. there can always be more water in the glass and I love always. that and I think always. that's so key and such a great uh a great default to have and I think you and I are both very blessed to have that viewpoint of Indeed. the world and some people sometimes they might say hey that's maybe naive but I think it's a beautiful blessing to it is. be like it there's is. a way there is a way to no, do it no no I, I I need more Ainsley's I do <laughs> I need that bright light. I need that big smile. I want to be that to other people. I know I am. I know that you are. And maybe collectively more of that is what helps change our world. In our little corner of the world, we're painting it so much more brighter. And someone needs to see that bright light because they're seeing it and they're thinking, oh, there's light there. I'm going to follow the light. It sounds very simplistic. However, so many people shine the light for me. I need to shine the light now for them and bring others along in that process. That's really part of what this is. It's just 
collectively we bring everyone else along in the process, whatever process and journey that they're on. That's sort of the human condition, uh, if you will. Yeah, and everyone's got their own journey. That's right. Whatever that may be, but it's like, listen to it. And I love that you said that. Okay, what did you have to do to actually fully listen? Because, you know, this was born years ago. You were a teacher, you were an analyst, like you've had many different lives. But that like voice was maybe there every now and then, maybe you forgot about it for a while. What had to happen for you to like even take it to that hobby level and then take it to the business level? Uh, I was working at hospice, as you know, and I had a, a very huge job of managing hundreds of volunteers. And the work was very gratifying, but it was difficult. And I was actually taking training after work to help me get into business. And the more I learned, the more I knew that's the direction that I wanted to go in. And I remember listening to a speaker one night after a particularly hard day. And I sat there and I thought, you know what? I don't want to wait another moment and not do this. I don't want to have at my deathbed a regret. Like, you know, you really should have done something with that because I had learned from so many people at end of life, all the things they wish they had done. I didn't want that to be me. I wanted, even if it failed, I wanted to say, you know what? I did that because it could be something huge. And so in my dark, quiet moments and times driving back and forth, I just, it just kept gnawing on me and I didn't care how old I was. I was the oldest person in most of the classes that I took, but you know what? I felt like I was wise beyond my years because I had so many other rich career experiences that really helped me. And the most important part was learning to work with other people. I can work with any kind of person, truly. And that's a skill that comes from having those types of experiences. So it was really just, I don't want to get out of this life and not try to do this. This is something I'm going to do for me. And I was right. I really, really was spot on as to, gosh, I'm so glad that I did this. This is exactly where I want to be at the age I'm at right now. I'm glad that you listened to that voice. And I'm sure there are so many people that are so glad that you listened to that as well. Um, because you've been able to nourish their families. You've been able to, even if you just like think of the full trickle effect, you've been able to nourish their families. You're able to help your local businesses, you know, have another product that helps them build their brand. And you're able to share your story, which, you know, encourages other people to chase their own dreams as well, which is fantastic. We're going to change the world. I know Absolutely. you and me together. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been such an incredible experience. And I pinch myself sometimes when I think I'm really doing this. Mm. I'm doing it. I'm loving it. I'm thriving from it. I've never felt better. And this is what I've waited almost a lifetime to be able to do. And who gets to do that? Uh, it's almost a rarity that we get to do that. So it isn't too late for me. It's right where it needs to be. Pat, that's fantastic. Oh, you are such an inspiration on here. I love it. Um, if, as if you haven't shared enough nuggets with anyone, everyone so far, is there any, as we wrap up, any final words that you might have for someone who is listening and saying, oh gosh, you know, I should listen to that voice, but, but X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, not the right time. I don't have enough money. It's not the right age. You know, anything that you can share to just get them to even take like one step further to turning that think, dream into a reality. I think we're, we're, we're living at a time now where fortunately, if you have access to the internet, there's so much good wisdom there. I listen to podcasts a lot now. And I started listening to TED Talks, and then I've migrated 
to a number of other things, but people are more alike than we give them credit for. And pe people who perhaps maybe we put on a pedestal where they think, oh, she has it going on, he has it going on, he doesn't have a care in the world. You might be surprised to really hear their story. And so I'll give you an example. The swimmer, Michael Phelps, has a podcast that I listened to. I've actually listened to it twice where he talks about his journey. And I just sometimes, I'd be in the car, I literally would pull over on the side of the road to listen to some of what he described as the difficulties. And you look at him and you think, he can't have any trouble. But not only was he completely open and honest and transparent, and that's part of what I am attempting to be too in telling people, was any of this easy for me? Not really. I worked a full-time job my whole life and then was doing you know, the granola part-time and early morning and staying up all night and the, the ovens breaking and schlepping you know, all over Cleveland. But it was worth it because I think the greater good was something was telling me I really needed to keep going with it. I'm not sure what that was that was telling me but clearly that little voice just tells you, just get the information. You know, we live in an age of an overabundance of information. Pick one thing and, and learn about it. And then you go off into something else. You know, your neighborhood library, many of them I know are not open now. They're all online. You can literally ask the librarian a question to help get you started on, you know, I have this idea and start doing some investigation on your own, little by little by little. If you do a little, and I sort of make a, a plan every day, I'm gonna spend at least an hour learning for me. Learning for me, because the day just goes by so fast with interruptions and other things I need to do, but that one hour is mine and it's investing back in me about something that maybe I want to learn about, but it invariably helps me be better at the task at hand that I do in running this, this little business of mine. And people have never had such access to information as they do now. And a lot of it's free. <laughs> and organizations are giving a lot of the information away they're not going to chase after you to get it. You have to kind of tap into it. So I would implore folks to just open your mind a little, ask questions of people maybe you know, or even people you don't know, like your neighborhood librarian. Those people are fonts of information. And so I'm a big believer in, in teaching because I've, I've had a career. Part of my career has been as a teacher, learning more helps you. It, it just does. And it may not be necessarily learning more about granola, but it's learning about other things that affect how I approach selling my product out into the bigger world. That is such a great piece of advice for everyone. We can all have more knowledge on whatever it is that's going to help you in your business and in your life because the two are 100% connected and we always need to nourish ourselves as founders because the business you know needs your wisdom and your strength within it and like you never know where inspiration is going to come from you might hear someone talking about crafting and you're like oh hold on I could do something like this for my like food company that's true you never know but you can't so true that, bubble. that is so true so true you don't know it could be a song on the radio or you're reading a passage that maybe you've read the same book. I have books that I read over and over again, but you're almost reading it with fresh eyes. Mm. Or someone said something to you and it finally hits you in the head, like, come on, come on, mm -hmm. I hear you. So inspiration is everywhere. I think we have to be open to it. It's a process. Every day is not going to be the same. And that's part of the beauty of it and, and understanding that it's okay not to always be okay. And feeling like I'm uncertain, I don't really know, I have to kind of 
understand and get my sea legs with it. But that's part of this process. And last year, I think, taught so many of us about, okay, we have to just be. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. How do you be and just keep moving forward? Well, Pat, thank you so, so much for coming on and sharing your journey today on the Food Founders podcast. I can't wait to continue to watch you grow. And you know, I'm one of your biggest fans out there. Um, so thank you for sharing your journey and for all that you are doing in the food community. Thank you, Ainsley, so very, very much. I'm so grateful for just your, your bright light your inspiration to me, your hard work ethic, and your having the ability to share out my story on your Food Founders podcast. Thank you very, very much. Oh, my pleasure, Pat. Keep on shining that light there, and together we're going to change the world. Absolutely. Absolutely.